Should we start? Yeah. Are should we, we start? Rolling? You're rolling for three minutes. Oh, oh are we? Okay. Uh, that? Oh, slate. Slate. Get con. Get con. Get con. One, two, yeah. Because bro, I'm like, fuck your fluid. No, I know, you're fucking fluid. I mean, shut up. Oh, no, no, you are. <laughs> I've got three licks. You have three licks? But you have like 47,000 licks. I don't know about 47,000. I've seen it. Have you seen it? I've seen it in action. Okay. And then he comes in and he's like, hey, that's the, oh yeah, that's the lick I stole. I'm like, what? No, it's true. <laughs> okay, so it was Nam, uh, maybe like, it was seven years ago or something like that. But I go by some booth and you're... And I was like, what was that? <laughs> and it was that thing where you reach behind the, okay. Yeah, the way I, I, I always, I always do it, do it go from low to like. Oh, wow. So you even grab the strings with all your fingers. Yeah, so I can go even higher. Which is. But I mean, you have the option, right? You can just okay. go. <laughs> it's stuff that I came up with when I got rid of the whammy bar that I wanted to still be able to do some really cool, quirky stuff. That's an awesome trick. Oh, thanks, man. No, it's amazing. And you know what, uh, seriously, and w what's so cool about it is it's showy because you're reaching over and doing this, yeah. and then there's also an instant sonic yeah. payoff. But there's a sonic payoff, but it's funny. Some people are like, they see me do that and that kind of thing, and yeah. they don't, for some reason, hear the sonic payoff. So they think, I'm just doing this. And then I see somebody reach over and do something, and I'm like, you kind of reached over, but you didn't do anything. <laughs> and they're like, well, uh, isn't, that, isn't that what you do just for looks? I'm like, it's not looks, dude. It's a lick. Right, 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 right. It's like, a total. <laughs> when you hear a recording of it and you don't see, get the visual, it still sounds like a cool thing. I, I was only going like... <laughs> bending like that, but you it looks like you're actually doing it and you're almost bending like the second... It's like you could almost bend a chord in there, like a bend an interval. It's almost like a, like a uh, what do you call it, the B bender? If you right. put it on the E. Yeah, see, okay, now I got more <laughs> so, to practice. So that's how it started. That's amazing. And then it just went into this, hey, I just want to it could keep going and keep going and keep going. That's because I, I love doing stuff like uh, that. If you do that and then follow it by like a, uh, you know, pushing behind the nut, so it's like... Ah, uh, see, that's just amazing. Uh, I love that shit. No, but it's because there's a lot of charisma involved there. Uh, well, it's you know. it's that thing. It's like I, I I grew up, you know. I saw Van Halen when I was 14, and not right. only was Eddie like blowing my mind with his his fiery right playing, but he was like running around on stage and a showman. Yeah. And so all my favorite guitar players are showmen. You know, even Jimmy right. Page was a showman. Mm -hmm. um, Tony Iommi not so much, but Angus Young. He's still, he's oh. like a grandpa now and he's running around like a maniac. So I, I appreciate that, the showmanship of it. Absolutely. So I, I basically go on stage and, and kind of like portray what I want to see when I'm in the audience. And that's how I think, I think, I think everybody should do that. I think. What a great tip. Yeah. Well, hey, that's, that's today's tip, the first tip of the day. That's amazing. <laughs> Seriously, be the guitar player that you wish you were watching at a concert. Yeah, whatever, exactly. Yeah. Right? That's it, yeah. That's great, great, great. I love that, yeah. Because sometimes we can get into our own heads too much. Like, is the tone good? Or is my inner mix good? Or whatever, you know, like, we're, you know what I mean? Like, well, and then, like, you don't have that, we don't have that luxury. Right. Because, I mean, I went out to, uh, I just got back from uh, South America with Bon Jovi, and I, right. the first two shows were Santiago and, uh, and Buenos Aires. And they were great shows, but not my great shows. But you can't let the audience know that you're, oh, my, my mix is... And, right. And, and it wasn't anybody's fault. There were, they were having frequency problems with the wireless packs. Mm. So my in-ears were cutting out all night. You just had to play through and it. And you just got to, okay, hey, dude, I'm a professional. I'm just going to play through it. But when yeah. it cuts out in a weird yeah. beat... And then comes back, and you gotta guess where the fuck you are. <laughs> Seven dude, times a song, that sucks. Dude, we played Budokan like last month, and my in ears, you know, they forgot to change the batteries in the pack. So I'm just playing, I'm playing, playing. Yeah, dead, but that's somebody's dead. fault. <laughs> yeah, that's somebody's fault. It was somebody's that's that's fault. human error there. But you know, you're playing along, you're just. What, what, where's my, oh shit, I can't hear the drums either, you know? And yeah, that's what everything's gone. Going. Everything's gone. Yeah, everything's gone. So you're looking at the, and the guy's like, and it, what, what is it? And I'm like, 
you know, and then oh, he's yeah. got to run out. You got some little guy behind and you, change like, your pack. changing your pack or like changing the batteries. Well, you know, you're standing there trying to still look cool. <laughs> oh my God, changing <laughs> yeah, the batteries. Yeah. See, these guys work really hard. They do. But oh, don't I forget mean, to change the batteries, man. No, the techs in Japan are legendary for how amazing they are, but oh, everybody sure. makes mistakes. And, yeah. you know, it was, uh, yeah, it's just disconcerting when you're like, because that, that doesn't, you know, your monitor goes out on stage, it's a wedge. You're like, I think it went, oh, I see my mom, but you can still hear the drums back there. But when the in-ears go out, it's just like, everything's gone. It's like you went deaf yeah. at a show. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, it's very disconcerting. Yeah. So yeah, it is. you can still got to hear the drums and kind of play through it because you got things stuck in your ears muting like 30 dB of sound. So, you know. Well, that, yeah, that's all, I, mean, I don't think people understand that kind of thing. No, they but, don't. But you still <laughs> do your thing and you, and you perform and you play. Yeah, but, play through uh, it. I mean, yeah. it's, it's it's very rare that um, it sounds amazing wherever you are. Yeah. You know, like there's always a compromise, but yeah. your job is to like perform and play and yeah. you do your, you know, you do your best. Yeah. 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 And remember. have fun. I think if you don't have fun, yeah. I still try to have fun. I have like, okay, yeah. my, my pack's cutting out, something's wrong with that pedal, we don't have time to fix it, but... Just keep smiling, dude. Keep smiling. Because you could be somewhere else, like pumping gas or pumping burgers. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but one of my first touring gigs was with the band Five for Fighting. And when I joined that band, they had this song Superman, which was like a big single. Huge, yeah. It, yeah, it was right around that. the uh, uh, September 11th, 2001. Right. You know, it was t uh, t terrible. And that song was like a you know anthem or something for the firefighters and whatever. So that song yeah. became a big hit. And I joined the, the band around that time touring with them. And I'll never forget John Andrazik was he played solo piano at the concert for New York. So yeah. there he is, Madison Square Garden, like everybody's watching. Because yeah. it's you know, there's who knows how many millions of people watching on TV. Right. And he played and he sang beautifully, played the piano, and afterwards he was like he, he told me, he goes, My inner's cut out for the entire song and all like I could hear like this like I think he had like some crazy static in his ears. He's playing a piano ballad at Madison Square Garden, just him See, and nothing, the piano and his voice. That's and hero it. shit. That it is. It because is somebody when someone has to um, survive that. <laughs> yeah, and man, not man. have any anybody in the audience or anybody else know what's going on. Yeah. And they just walk away and, and like the drummer is like, sorry guys, sorry I was off uh, when you know I was off the click for a little bit. And I'm like, yeah, dude, didn't hear it. Yeah. <laughs> good job, dude. <laughs> no, well, I think that's a good, that's a good point. We can all get in our own heads at a gig. I remember another gig with Fight for Fight, and this was when I learned like what you're talking about, like don't get in your own head, just enjoy it. And I, I remember playing that, it was that song, it was Superman, and yeah. I was particularly in my own head with the mix or something one night yeah. going, sounds like shit, I can't get in the zone, what's going on? I was just like bumming out, and then I, we ended the song, and I s stopped, and the crowd stood up and gave us a standing ovation. And that was my light bulb went off, like where are you right now? Yeah, dude, like, soak you're not it in. in the zone. Yeah, soak yeah, yeah, it in, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 why totally. are you having a bad time at this moment? Yeah. Like, you know, and I just went, I'm gonna really try and be present. There you are know? times where, like, I, I'm still getting used to it. And people are like, look, I've done over a hundred uh, Bon Jovi shows, but I'm still yeah. getting used to playing simple chord figures and then having to blaze. Like when I play yeah. with the drills, I'm blazing all night. So your hands right. get used to blazing. <laughs> And then right. at the end, you're awesome. But when you're just periodically blazing and the rest of the time your hands are getting stiff from just playing bar chords and, and, chords. and the G chord and stuff like that, it's hard to, I'm just getting used to going back and forth. So is it so a big adjustment going from a drills gig to a Bon Jovi gig? Huge, so, yeah. it's huge. The, the, the drills show is so much more demanding on my hands. Yeah. But at the same time, they, they're in a zone the entire show. Okay. The zone uh, for Bon Jovi was like this. Right. Because you got to play really more emotive and and long notes, and and you just want to play something that's really cool or or bluesy or something like that. And then mm -hmm. when you want to rip, your hands like, what the, what are you doing? Right, right, right. Like, we don't rip. Right, 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 right. right, right. <laughs> you know, so they're telling me, but so there's sometimes where I have a moment, like we have a moment and keep the faith where I could just blow, you know blow and just cool. lose my mind and be awesome, uh, if I want. But right. it's 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 those times where oh my hands not responding so just do just make it look good so I do like the crazy bends and the head banging all stuff like that yeah. and then at the end of it you're like well I think it turned out okay and then people yeah. will be like that was the best keep the face solo ever and you're like <laughs> so well, and you learn from that you go okay well that then if my hands ever getting tired just that's your escape route right just do what like uh, I, I remember 
playing with a singer that she said like, yeah, I don't know what my voice is going to be like every night because being a you, you're a singer, lead yeah. singer, and be, being a singer, it's like some nights you know it's cold outside and things. So she goes, I don't know where it's going to. It's like a new adventure every right. day, yeah. and then I just kind of try and have fun with it. Yeah, and I guess it's like that with their hands, right? I, I truly believe that, and, 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 and to get technical, because we're here being technical, yeah. um, if I do two months with Bon Jovi with an E flat mm. with 10 to 46s, and then a week later go do a drill show in 440 with 10 to 46 gauge, mm. my hand's like, fuck you. Right, 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 right. So, yeah. and then I tried yeah. nines, and nines are way too light, but nine and a halves. Yeah. We talked about that. It's, yeah, it's like that's a good I think page. it's going to be the new my new tens nine and a half for when I'm in four forty. Yeah, and then stick to because then my hands are are even. You know, it's, right? It's like yeah, going between E flat and tens. Yeah, exactly. Nine and a half. And that's a good because yeah. with the bending that I do and the runs that I do, and I find that when your your left hand is doing pull offs, they sound better with the lighter strings. Oh, really? Yeah. That's interesting. I mean, Eddie, yeah. you know, Eddie was a sound, and it was nines in, nine to 40, I think, right, in E flat. Nine to 42, I think. And then and you think about un Unchained being drop C sharp. Right. With that 42 on the bottom. Yeah. But there's that trick of playing really light and close to the bridge. Right. So you don't pound it sharp. Yeah. Well, when right. I played with Cornell, I mean, we did uh, the, you know, a bunch of Soundgarden with drop B. And yeah. also What You Are by Audio Slave is drop B, drop low E string down to B. I didn't use a different gauge. No. Hey, you can go all the way down to B as long as you tune it. You know, it's uh, who else does that? Like Ty Tabor. You had to tune it a little flat. Right, and then you hit it, and it kind of. But it's part of the sound. It is part of the sound. Like the sound the elasticity of it. Yeah, and Kai's, I love that. Yeah, kind it of, sounds mm, angry it and does. Fuck you. It sounds awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Definitely, it's got a thing. Like, and the other the other thing with Soundgarden was playing like a, a you know if, as high as you can play up on the neck, like a lot of the chords and like um, I can't tune down right now because the guitar's got a tramp. <laughs> You know. Play it. You do it up. It's a little out of yeah, tune, but totally. it, it still sounds like the song. Well, that, that you don't from... do that. You know. Well, it's exactly uh, Tony Allen. Right. right. <laughs> Here, that sounds weird. Thinner. But you know what else? Even, even like, uh, like what sounds more like? Or actually on a strat. Fatter, fatter. It sounds way fatter. Use the fat strings, boys. Yeah. yeah. The E string is your friend. Yeah, all totally. over the neck. Even. I love it. It's cool. Tune. Yeah, a moment to tune. Shit's flat. So I got a great one to ask you. Okay. Ask me. Okay. All right. I'm taking that off. And yeah, I know they're kind of crazy and looking, right? And we're back. So uh, I got a great question. Well, I hope it's a great question. If I do say so myself. No, I saw you giving a guitar lesson once, and it was yeah. great. And one thing that you talked about was, and this is a great uh, rut buster or like get out of the box sort of buster. I find that you could do any like a lick like this, <laughs> like where you where you play the same <laughs> wait, thing. Wait, I just want to say, he goes a lick like this, and he fucking blazes that fucking awesomeness. That's uh, awesome. Well, I got it from you though. It's like honestly, it's like across the three strings, right, you know, right, where right, where right. you can do anything on on. So it's like any two pair of strings, you then just shift up. You just do a, a lick and then do it in three octaves, really. And it's like, great because yeah. not only you're you're repeating a phrase, which gets it in people's heads, yeah. which I think is cool because when it's a hook. play a cool, yeah, it's like yeah. a hook, right? Yeah, and, exactly. and you're building it up at an octave every time. So I love that. Like when you, I can't but remember. The, you know, what's really cool about it when you played that lick, I didn't even get me from it, which is awesome. Because if right. if I show somebody something and then just walk away and keep it my lick that they keep doing, right? I don't think that's as cool as someone taking something that I showed them and making it theirs. Right. You know what I mean? I don't even know if that was. That's just like I was. Going to, if I play that. Shifting up to the to to the fifth fret, and then shifting up here to the eighth fret. Whatever after that. Oh yeah, and then you, you can know just what's really cool too. It's a it's a it's an odd amount of notes per string. An odd number of uh yeah right yeah yeah. 
six, right? Or yeah, one, two, three, it's four, a six-note phrase. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, yeah, six-note for phrase. Because you can do it like in a triplet, or you can do it right not in a triplet, and then make it just sound. Wha- one, two, three, four. That'd be one way. Or one, two, three, four. Was that just a faster version? Yeah, it's, of the same no, thing. it's the same thing. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. But I, I love that kind of the way to, the way to look at things, you know. Yeah. And it's like, and the other thing I do is like when people are like, how do I, I get around on the fretboard? I go, well, give, me, give me a key, A. So you do a lick, right? How many A's you got? You got. That's you cool, man. Think about all that one lick that you just do all over the neck, and then the more you do that with you know, more elaborate licks, and just you start on the A, or if you know that you like starting on the E for the, mm. as the five. It's, it's so many places that you could do it, and that's how I got around on the fretboard in the beginning. Kind the of tone thing. changes, and also the fingering positions change a little bit and stuff, and so it opens up different ideas. Oh, yeah, because right? it, it's... <laughs> Awesome. They all sound, they all sound different, right? I, I remember when I was at MI, an exercise to learn the notes on the neck, or like take A. So you're going to play in between the, could you play open? No, no open strings, and you're going to go up as far as the 12th fret. So you go here, here, here. And you just play A's all the way, all, all, over, all over the place. And you do that with every note, right? Yeah. And then it really, like within two weeks of me practicing doing that, you know. C's all over the neck, and you just do it up every string. So in between, the, no open strings, and in between the first fret and twelfth fret. Yeah. And just take every note and do that. And before long, you're seeing the the, the pitches all over. You know, because the pitch, pitch, yeah, rock exactly. guitar players, we just don't. Exactly. This is this is and like jazz guys are like, what are you talking about? That's so they know all over the right. neck. Right. And and they use all their fingers. How many times? How many riffs do you use like one finger? Like just like because it's like a. <laughs> but who? And guys are like, so I gotta go. Like, no, dude, I used one finger. You know, and it's like, oh. It sounds smooth, too, because you're not breaking. Well, you're sliding it around, right? But the the other thing is, too, is like, say in the key of B, and you do, like, the the boxes, right? Those are the pentatonic boxes, without the flat five or the six or anything like that, Mm -hmm. to get technical. But then, and then I've been showing people, like, doing all the boxes on, like, each, on just two strings, so they feel like... Right, and then in this uh, one of the Bon Jovi songs, uh, "This House Is Not For Sale," it's the opening song. But we do a coda, and I do a solo. Mm-hmm. And this lick that I do. Is, you know, but the cool thing about that is, um, so I'm, I'm playing it, and then I do it night after night, and then everybody was re- reviewing like a, a show mm. to get together for South America, mm. and then uh, so we did this rehearsal, and Tico jumped on my, he did a fill, he okay. ended my lick with a fill, following the, the, the pattern. Oh shit. Like da 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 Yeah, and, then, and I was like, ah! <laughs> and I look That's at cool. him and he's like, is that cool? I'm like, <laughs> fucking awesome! So I went up to him after and I'm like, okay dude, not only was it cool that you jumped on the rhythm of my lick, but Flattering, hello, yeah. thanks. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He's Stick listening. with tours, ladies and gentlemen. Thank he's you. Listening. Yeah, he's totally listening and jumping on it. Which and then we great. found, yeah. like, we just did. Um, it's funny, and people don't know this, but we we only did always once, okay. um, and we did it the last show in Sao Paulo. And Tico and I look at each other okay. when he's coming around to do a fill in the ne- next session. We look at each other because we want to lock in to like a rhythm. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm going. He goes back and back and back and then he does something or, and then yeah. adds more to make it, but accents the same place as I do. Right. And then I'll do something else and then I'm looking to see what he's doing and we kind of lock in and then at the end of it, he's like, oh, that was awesome. <laughs> and I'm like, well, it's powerful. Thought, you know, it, it everybody really on is. the same thing every now and then is ACDC. Yeah. But that's what makes bunch. it sound like a band, right? Yeah, totally. That's yeah. what makes it sound like a band. The power of simplicity. Yeah. Everybody backing up something. And then yeah. maybe one other guy's doing something different. But you got, you know what I mean? Like that fucking power of rock. Yeah, absolutely. The majesty of roll. That's a, like a great, great car thing right there. <laughs> power of rock and the majesty of roll. But the other thing, too, is what we're talking about 
I'm jumping all over the map. Yeah, we're talking okay. about you're talking about six note phrases, mm -hmm. and I was talking about the the pentatonic boxes on one string. But there's a, th a lick that I do that's like a five note phrase because I thought there's I started doing this in B, and then there's a song called Sunny Days, and I do a little thing at the beginning of it. Right. And uh, I go from a. And then I go, That kind of thing. Okay, slow down. <laughs> so I'm just, that? that's, so that's a five note phrase, but I'm changing the high notes. So I'm going, again, pentatonic, but then I go to the nine. That kind of thing. Where's the where's the the, the beat in to, that? So to, okay, well now I can only do it fast. So I'm okay. going. That. Okay, let's. Go. Yeah, and oh, so it turns nice. around in the middle, the rhythm kind of, because of the does, five note. It does, because of the five note. And then yeah. when I was messing around with the two note things, I thought, well, why, I, why, I could do this if I'm going... Like, this came from it. Oh, wow, that's amazing, yeah. Okay, no, so so, those are yeah. the boxes, we're changing the order and putting a slide in between, right? Okay, so <laughs> how do you do that slow? <laughs> so I can't do anything slow. Me when I watch later. Uh, sorry, one more time. Uh, so, like, starting on the five, so okay. we're on uh, 15, 9, 20, 20, 19th fret. Or the. Uh. Yeah, so I'm going. Slide to the 12th fret. And you're sliding. Well, it's kind of. Yeah, but it's, it's kind of like a. Uh. Right, right, right. Got, so got it. Okay, I'm gonna work on this later. That's cool. I love doing shit like that. Where you're like, I do the, this thing all the time. I'm like, um, you know, you get yeah, it up and down. I love that too, man. Yeah, because you get one from one position to the other. You know, it works really good. You know, and then you can double back on yourself. Or, Yeah, it's one of those things when you do it really fast, it's, yeah. it sounds like a really cool lick. But yeah. then if you're being like melodic, you know. Shifting you know, something out. really, you know, more, you know, and more emotion and passion to it. Right. I mean, even, it's kind of even Pink floyd going like. You know what I mean? It almost sounds like comfortably yeah. numb or something when he's like. I mean, it's a It's try it. Totally. <laughs> Yeah. Right. And Beautiful. Then, yeah. But then, this fucking what? There was, it was like I remember the other day where it's like if you're doing like, uh, which is the pentatonic with the flat five kind of thing. But That's then you're cool. like, it's kind of like, uh, you, you know, you ever challenge yourself? I would play fucking pentatonic without the root note ever. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. And then it's like, yeah. so use the nine instead of the one, the one or the two, right? And then you. Oh, I don't think so. Awesome. I mean, it sounds cool with a neck pickup and stuff. Yeah. I'm working on that later too. <laughs> Do you ever see the? You ever watch that show, Guitar Moves? You know the show I'm talking about, where no. uh, that dude, it's a, it's a Vice thing. You know, um, amazing show, but. It's uh, on TV. He interviews Josh from the guy interviews Josh from. I wish I knew this guy's name because he's great. I, I feel bad. Not, I think it's Mark or Mike or something, but. Um, yeah, it's no, it's a it's an internet thing. Okay, and he interviews what Keith show? Richards, which is amazing. Keith Richards, which is amazing. Like the Keith That's Richards interview, it, Keith takes the string, he takes the six string off, and he shows him the five string thing, and they're oh, like cool. doing that, and they're passing the guitar back Fuck, and forth. I it's love cool. That. But he interviews Josh from uh, Queens, right. and Josh is a really cool guitar player. This is the simplest thing, and I've used this a million times now in writing. Just this little scale. <laughs> You know, so, you it know, sounds like a major Jetsons. Third. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you, you, you ever Jetson? <laughs> exactly. It's like yeah, the simplest, really cool. simplest little thing you can do to kind of make, like, you know, you're in an E sort of blues context or rock, but 
I get tired of the same old, you See, know. Uh, you know what it, I mean? Is, sometimes it's a, cha a change in notes, and sometimes it's a change of patterns. Yeah. That, that keeps me interested Absolutely. in pentatonic, for instance. Yeah. Because it's like, if you're doing the, again, I always move the boxes around, like sliding the boxes around, and then I thought, well, I got this. So then I go. Yeah, you're doing a very interesting thing in between to bridge the, but, the slide. Then, and then you're like, okay, well, that was really cool, but what else could I do? And then I like this lick, which is. Yeah. <laughs> Which is great because it's sort of it sounds minor for a minute, but then you hear, yeah, and, and then, then I and then I put them all together. So I'll go. It's amazing, dude. Yeah, it's amazing. But that's you know wonderful thing about your playing is exactly what I'm talking about. I get tired of this. Yeah, and but you know what? It's, then you can find you could work on this stuff all day long, and then when you go on stage, you just do that. <laughs> Well, it's the old standby, right? I know. I mean, you're playing amazing shit, but it's like, whoa, I can do that at home, but that's when I'm kind of at 90% or 95% capacity. Right. But now I'm on stage and my mix kind of sucks getting back to that. The mix or whatever. sucks. Oh, you're distracted by sweat in your eye and there's yeah. a light over here. And Will there's anyone really notice if I just, you know, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be good enough. No, 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 no. You should always go for it if, you, yeah. if you're feeling good, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, the other, I mean, the simple thing uh, that while we're kind of on this sort of E blues mix it up to topic, like if you're in that whole Dorian thing. I love that, like throwing yeah. a flat five in there. And then you can get up here. You know what I mean? Like on, right. the, on the second string. To play the flat five there. Oh, instead yeah, that's of, what I do that too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, So you're great with your left hand. I pick almost everything because my left hand sucks. So, uh, but it's like, I like it. even like. <laughs> it's kind of like. And you can get like. And, yeah. there's, and then there's, um, you know, everybody does like that. So the, the, it, or like. I'm actually going jumping without like. Ah, I gotta work on that. That's so cool. This is um, that's really cool. But and then there's a there's a, a thing that I do. Uh, there's a new song called uh, "No Woman of Mine" coming out on the new Drills record, and I, okay. I basically do because I've had so many YouTube fans be, hey, you gotta do a blues tune, do a blues tune. I'm like, uh -huh. okay, so uh, okay, if I can do a blues tune, it's gonna be like this. Yeah. I'm si I'm singing on top of it, but I'm playing yeah. stuff. Like <laughs> Picked it up, fucked it up. So you've developed a stuff because I know this is you. If I didn't hear it, you know, it's your sound. It's oh, like thanks, it's, which is like in your playing blues, but it's it's just got like this combination of like obviously there's a, a pyrotechnical kind of flash element, but there's yeah. also like a lot of Billy Gibbons going on. And well, uh, I fucking grew up on that stuff, right? And then yeah, the, and yeah. you take that. Yeah, and <laughs> but it's like uh, when I. That, that's it's got like a Greek background to it. Oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah yes so it does. I yeah. That. And then I love the droney stuff. The solo is like.
Oh, thank you. So yeah. great, dude. Thanks, yeah, well, it's just really creative. You're taking a traditional sounds that are, you know, sounds we've, we've all heard, but you do, I mean, it's a lot of uh, unique well, stuff. I, I it kinda, holds my ear, you know. Thanks, man. Yeah, but well, I, I feel like uh, if you keep doing stuff that's been done before, then it's hard to stand out. And that's Absolutely. a lot of the young players. I, I really, yeah. when I do clinics and stuff and I talk to people, I'm like, hey, you need to try to be inventive. You have to come up with your own style and you have to do stuff that, or if you, there's no, nothing wrong with taking your influences and kind of like splattering them into your style. Right. But don't make it so obvious. So instead, like it, the whole, instead of going. Right. I mean, that kind of thing you. where it's like. You, you took Eddie and now yeah. you turned it into But And I steal for yeah. myself because I did that crazy lick in uh, Sunny Days on the first record. And on the new record, I'm doing. I, I love Van Halen. We geek out over Eddie all the time, right? He's, We're disciples of Ed. Hey, he's disciples of Ed. He's the, the disciples of Ed. We're going to make a band. <laughs> So, yeah, let's see if we get carried away. Um, but I, so I, I, I wanted to do something that was very, like, I feel like I'm the one, hot for teacher, all that stuff. It's like, yeah. they got that from, like, ZZ Top. Oh, full through on. Through steroids and speed and drugs and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But it's like that, it's got that power, right? Yeah. So, and I wanted to do something that was very, I'm the one-ish. And I got Glenn Sobel from Alice Cooper's band, because oh. he loves Alex Van Halen, so he came in and played drums on it. Right. And, and I wanted the solo to be, like, you know, I'm the one has different keys. He should have shreds in different keys and uh, does absolutely. his licks. Yeah. So I did the same kind of thing, but Phil X licks, like no whammy bar, and, right. and stealing from those, those weirdness and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And it was just, it was fun to do it live off the floor with the guys. But yeah. the flavor is kind of like, say you're going to be like... I'm in D. Yeah, so dude. fucking fucked up. I mean, nobody does it anymore, you know. It's like I, have, I actually have a song on my new record that's that I'm working on. That's uh, the same. It's the boogie group, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, did it, did it, did it, did it, you know. And uh, very few people can. I don't know that oh, whole. No. Uh, <laughs> When you slow it down, right. and then, but the flow in his wrist. Oh my god! Like there's so many people that go, "Hey, here's I'm the one." I'm like, "No, it's not. No, it's Next not." Video. Yeah. Pretty I much, know. Right? Yeah. I gotta practice it a little bit because I gotta go like, like an hour before I have it. Like, because yeah. I, I feel like I'm, I do it too stiff. Yeah, yeah, and then when it's loose, it's on. Nobody has his balance. Like, that's that's hard. I know, totally. I I have to get... A lot of people think, because I did that eruption lesson or whatever, they think, oh, you can play... I can't play that stuff if I don't practice it. Like, I need to work up to it for a couple days. Yeah, for sure. Play, 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 and get in that swing and stuff, and then I can do it. But it's like, you're in the... Or whatever, you know? Totally, yeah. So amazing that stuff. I mean, yeah, it's, so. when yeah. when you grow up with that stuff and and you and you have it in your pocket, yeah, it's, yeah. it kind of gives you, I don't know. It's it's one of those things. Like I do um, the beaded solo in our show. Like we do fire really fast by Hendrix, oh, and cool. then I go through like uh, uh, I play the Flintstones and then the theme from Gilligan's Island for a minute, and then I do beat it <laughs> and Crazy Train, and then go crazy, right? Right, right. But it's super fast. Okay. Yeah. But and I do the beat it solo without a whammy bar, and it's kind of like, how the fuck are you doing that? <laughs> but I have this, this peeve about people that play, um, they teach the beat it solo, and everybody does that second part tapped, but it's not tapped. Ah, uh, okay. Well, it's it's so, start. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Part is like, 
Right, it's like, the old. I'm going, that's not it, man. Yeah, it's yeah. Okay. So I have. You used to I, do I, those big stretches like hold for. Dude, it was crazy. Even in, in the full. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah, so, it's hard. What's the. Uh, but he's got monster hands. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was watching his hand. Oh. <laughs> it's easier I'm, to I'm watch your hand up. this way. I gotta practice that. <laughs> I need to pre it's hard stuff it's to play, yeah. you know? Yeah. There's just so much balls in it, too. Oh, it's it like, is. You know? Like, it is, and it's so accurate. Yeah. And he was like, I think that he was like 23 when he did that, right? It's I know. Like, it's fun. Uh -huh. I know, no, it's so <laughs> ferocious. And he, not to mention, he invented it, you know? It was like No, and, and, yeah. and then what, it's aside from like what, you know, the tapping, and we're talking about those other licks, like, you know? Yeah. That so and, cool. and there's so many other things that he does, like the beginning of, of uh, the solo to the Ice Cream Man. All that stuff is just. That'll, don't it'll, it'll, that's another uh, super intervolic. It's like. Yeah, you know, that's a, that one. Yeah. That's, that's another one that needs practice. That's another, yeah, I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not doing that right now. <laughs> that stuff, right? It's just yeah, totally. the, it's 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 not difficult. I mean, I, I sort of once you get it, it's not difficult, but it's just so inventive. Like, what is it? That whole thing, like you know. the hardest yeah. lick to me in eruption is the. Uh, uh, I can't remember. Yeah. That. yeah, it's a bit. Yeah, it's and, and, great. And we didn't have YouTube back then, and we didn't right. have tab tablature back then and stuff. No. And we just learned that stuff by dropping the needle. Right. It was like playing it. You know what I did? I had a four track, a task in four track, and three and three quarter speed and one and seven eighths. Oh. And so what I used to do is take my regular stereo cassette deck, yeah. plug it out into the four track and record at three and three quarter, and then I'd knock the switch down to one and seven eighth on the four track. And you could, oh, wow. And it'd be half speed. You know, yeah. so it was like half speed on the four track. And that worked good, because it was just down an octave. But yeah. it was like, yeah, this phrase trainers and shit that we have now, it's a whole other world. You know? It's a whole other world. That's why you there's like 12 so year olds lucky. that are like, you're yeah, I can play all that stuff those guys are doing. You're so lucky. I know, right? You have no idea. So, um, we got to talk about it for a second, because we're both from Canada. Yeah. And oh, yes. Canucks. Yeah, we're totally Canucks. And I've known you since the Powder days. He was in a band called Powder. I used to go see him. But actually, we played on some of the same bills. Like with yeah. We played with at Key night. Club and El, El Rey Theater. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's the El Rey, El Rey Theater. Yeah. yeah. I remember a whiskey gig. Yeah. But um, your journey, like, you came all the way to L.A. and made it. In 97. Fuck, 97. isn't that weird? The yeah, same the word made it. The words made it. Well, dude, if imagine. You know? I mean, yeah. I saw Bon Jovi in uh, 87. Me too. You know? In yeah. Toronto. And you're like, would you ever have thought, well, I'm going to be in that. You're watching this great show. I bought tickets to see Bon Jovi uh, New Jersey tour right. at CNE Grandstand, which isn't even there anymore. Wow. Yeah. And you're watching this, sh and I was cl completely blown away by the show and the band and everything like that. Yeah. And yeah, and if somebody would have said, hey, man, you're going to be playing with these guys in 30 years. <laughs> I feel like, what? right. Yeah. But then again, there was always, and this is important, I think, there was always a part of me, I have to say, that thought, well, when that guy's not going to do it anymore, I can do it. Like, right. you know what I mean? Like, when those bands, it wasn't necessarily be in that band, but it was yeah. like, well, there's a guy up there, and one day he's going to be a lot older, and then, like, I'm going to be his age, so I, I think I can do that. You know? yeah. Why can't I be that guy if I just work hard at it? All I got to do is well, be and that's it. That's really it. diligent. You get it in your head that if, like, People are like, how can I do this? And the an the real answer is, there really isn't a shortcut. It takes hard work. Right. You need to practice, 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 and and there's there's too many people that are looking for shortcuts these days. Like, you know, yeah. I did Skype lessons for a while. Yeah. Everybody yeah. in the first five minutes. So how can I be faster tomorrow? Not right. like, 
um, what, what should I work on to be fast in six months? Yeah, like because we can we can work on that. Yeah, but if you want to be fast tomorrow, right? That's you know you can have your money back. I'll go on to somebody else. Right, right, and it's fast really to be all you know. There's like so many fat facets, and and you know like I don't know. It's just like the the other thing with you is, and I know this is it must be an element the first time you go in and play with a band or do a session or do anything, but the first first impression counts for so much, and you're so confident. That's one thing I always admire about you. You're confident, like no matter what you're doing. You, just, I remember going to see a, a Chris Lord Algae and and Bob Clear Mountain talk, do a seminar on like yeah. mixing, mixing, and somebody yeah. in the crowd asked, "What's the number one secret to your success?" You know, yeah. and Tom Lord, uh, Chris Lord Algae, who's you know very kind of you know. Yeah, I just saw know. him, and actually, oh, did he? He, yeah, he did our like TV mix. Oh, did he for uh, Rock and Rio? Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, he's yeah. you know how he is. So yeah, he's so. he's very like you know he's super New York or whatever, right? Yeah. And he's you know, but they they ask him what's what's the top three things, the secret to your success. And he goes, you know what it is? Number three, confidence. Number two, confidence. Number one, confidence. You got it? <laughs> and it's like, wow. And that you have a lot of confidence. I well, I remember when we were talking about when you went to audition for Chris Cornell. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, that was a great story. And I it just made me think that, like. If you have an opportunity mm. to audition for this, uh, something on that level or some, someone who's so iconic as a vocalist kind of thing, and you walk in and you've done your homework, yeah, you've learned it forwards and backwards, right. you've prepared, you've got the sounds, yeah, and and you just walk in like this gig's mine, <laughs> like super confident, then how do you not win? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of yeah. it. I mean, it's like you got to go in with that attitude, going with the tones. To me, it's like you learn the parts as best you can. You sing the background vocals, get yes. that shit too. Walk in with the right sounds so that it, there's like a thing that when you walk in, to me, there's this element of like, it's a, an artist, they probably just made a solo album or whatever. They're stressed out. They've yes. got to go out on the road now. They want this thing to win. They yeah. want it to be a success. Exactly. And it's a problem. They're looking for a guitar player, if not a whole band, when you're going in for that audition. Yeah. They're stressed out. They're like, am I going to be able to find anybody? Yeah. that you know?" So if you go in there and you know the parts, you got the tones, you're a nice person, yeah. and then you play with confidence, to me, the one, the, what they say to themselves in their head is, this is one less thing I got to worry about right here. Like this is, we could walk out on stage right now and play a gig, and it'd be pretty good. Yeah. Like with this guy, you know. Exactly. And that's what I want to make him feel like. Yeah. And I think that's that's what a lot of people. If you're ever going to audition for a gig like that, first of all, yeah. you should always have background vocals in your in your back pocket. And you're a great singer. I mean, but you're a strong lead singer, which thanks, is, man. Well, thanks, Mac. It's true. But it, you, you, not just anybody do the Bon Jovi gig because you got to have that voice. You gotta well, be able to sing. it's not. It's, uh, it's not that it. voice, but ab voice. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I do have to sing the wanted that's our, that is so famous in Dead or Alive, right? Wanted Dead Bust or it out right now. Come on. No, uh, nope. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, <laughs> but it's it's one of those things where it's uh, it's it, the more that you can offer as a musician to yeah. to that capacity of of side guy. Yeah. If you got backgrounds, you probably get the gig before the guy who doesn't sing. Right, right. So there's that too, but right. also we before we we end because I yeah. think we're coming. We have signature guitars. Oh yeah, yeah. So we got to talk about these. Um, so tell me about yours first. This is a um, this is one off the floor. And I we're here at Framus, left, right? So we're at Framus, yeah, Framus. Um, at, at the Warwick factory in uh, Mark Neu, Kirchen, Germany. I, I for the last three videos that I made. Hey man, I'm in Mark Neu, <laughs> Germany, and now we're hanging out. <laughs> But uh, we're here, and uh, this is my like eighth or ninth time. This is your first time. This is my first it's time. Pretty, it's a fabulous place. Yeah, it's insane. This but factory. This is off the floor because um, mine are all in road cases in coming back from South America, and or in the, I got one in my hotel room. Anyways, this is it's basically this is the XG, and this is one with the I usually my favorite is is the P90, but sometimes I do need humbuckers. So this is a, an Arcane. Uh, PX8, which is an Alnico Wake got an X on it, and uh, and it's just a volume and tone, and this is you know series split and and uh, parallel. Oh, oh yeah. great, 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 great. So it, like, th for instance, if I'm rocking Raise Your Hands with this guitar, and then we don't have time to change guitars to go into Lost Highway, which is the off the country record, mm. I just split it, and then it sounds like a telly kind of thing. Close enough. Right? It's close enough. Yeah. So, um, and then you know it's a hunk of mahogany, mahogany neck. Uh, rosewood fingerboard, and uh, it's very simple. 
do this rock and roll. It's like understated, which I love. You know, they're not dissimilar in some ways, these guitars, because of the, the whole... Wood makeup? Rock and roll machine. Yeah, wood makeup for sure, because mine's mahogany, mahogany neck, and maple top. But uh, it's not very thick, right? It's, it's you know, standard. I guess it's the sur standard body shape, which is, okay, yeah. you know, it's a little smaller than a Strat, I guess. Uh, but interestingly enough, I mean, I kind of was going for it like I could do series parallel right here. Yeah. So oh, I get cool. the. Get a little bit totally, of yeah. countryfied, you know? It's countryfied! Like, countryfied, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Pretty fun. So it's cool. It's like, it's just a real versatile guitar. I wanted to be able to play. One guitar all night, if if need be, right. without changing to you know. So it's got split coil tones and the, the series parallel thing. It's just real versatile. See, I'm such a one pickup freak. Yeah, yeah. That um, tell me about. I'll switch guitars if I need a neck pickup. Tell me about that because you have a thing about the tone of the magnets, right? Well, I, the I do. Pickup. I do. I have. Uh, there's there's a thing that I I believe like my because my favorite um, before I had this my favorite. Um, Guitarists in the studio were juniors, yeah, like an SG Junior or a Les Paul Junior, and the really it's one P90 right here. So it made me kind of research why I would like that so much. Yeah. And then you go, well, it's a P90 and it's got a neck pickup and it still wouldn't sound as good. Yeah. And then I had uh, I was with LTD um, ESP for a while, so I had yeah. two identical Vipers that sounded identical. Okay. So I put PX100s in. In the P90 style. A P90 style, humbug style, in, in those guitars. And then kept the neck pickup in one. Okay. And, and took the pickup, neck pickup out of that one. Oh. oh. And I, I heard a difference. Yeah. And then, I, and then I was talking to, like, geeking out with all my pickup buddies and, and yep. guitar guys, and they're like, well, we, we, we came to the conclusion that even though the neck pickup isn't engaged, that magnet is still kind of drawing. It's pulling. It's, it's pulling on the string, so you're not getting a true... Um, vibration from here to here. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. it's getting sucked in over here. So, and it totally makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So I, 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 I believe that. Les Paul Juniors, SG Juniors, and, uh, you know, Esquires. Yeah, I Esquires mean, a, as well. A lot of country guys, they're like, you know, Esquires is the way to go because if you don't need that neck pickup, it's pulling on the string. Same thing, I think. Yeah. That's a, it's a, it's, this is a real thing. It's not a, you know, I love tellies and my telly, I got a bottle of 66 a couple of years ago and it's got great, I got Ron Ellis pickups in it, killer guitar. You know, I can't be without that neck pickup, but there's something about I know exactly. There is something about a ring it. to the and, guitar, right? And so my favorite, my even my favorite XGs are just one pint, one P90, which is the yeah. Arcane P90X. Yeah. PX90, sorry. <laughs> P90X is a workout, right? Right. So the PX90. You do that too. And then uh, <laughs> not that one. And then the uh, and I have I have you know I have them with. Two humbuckers, two P90s, one humbucker, one P90, yeah. and and that's basically most of what I use all night. Wow. And wow. Um, and I have other uh, frames as well. I have a Panther or two. I have two of those, one with two humbuckers, one with one humbucker that I made with my neck, and my neck is a fatty. Right. You know, so. Right. Yeah, and then they made big. me a Flying was, V, too, man. Made me a did Flying V with two P90s. It's kick ass. I think I saw, did that guitar have an accident or something? It did. It, it broke it when it came. Yeah. Head it stock. came with a headstock. And Mark Van Gogh, my tech, he just, he made a, a, some, some kind of clamp that, and glued it back together, and it's like perfect now. Probably better than ever. Better, yeah. better than ever. We Sometimes, talked about this on the Tim and Pete show, that, you know, there's a theory that, like, they sound better after the headstock breaks. After a headstock break. <laughs> some, some people, actually, one guy told me, because I told him I had two Yamahas, and, and they were identical, and the same weight and everything, and did not sound the same. One sounded great, mm. one, one sounded bad. He goes... Maybe you should break the headstock. And I go, what do you mean? <laughs> because sometimes the wood is just not yeah. right. And when you break it, it, it releases this stress, yeah. and then you repair it, and it has more ring to it. And I'm like, I don't think I want to try that. <laughs> so I just sold it. Amazing. Yeah, that sounds like an extreme. Kids, don't try that. Yeah, don't try breaking your neck to make yeah. your guitar sound better. Unless you, I don't know. <laughs> Pete Thorne, ladies and gentlemen, woo! Phil X, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, this has been really fun. I guess we should probably get out of here because people probably, probably yeah, want it. Yeah, it's probably the most fun to get in this room. Dude, we finally sat down and did this. I love it. I know. We've yeah. been talking about it for how long? <laughs> yeah, well, not, this is great. This is great. Um, and we got to have you come and do uh, the, uh, Tim and Pete's guitar show as well. I love you. Yeah, well, yeah absolutely. Knock that out, but this yeah. was terrific. So much fun. See ya. Thanks. <laughs>